Hello, and welcome back to part five of Release and Deployment Management. My name is Dr. Suzanne Van Hove, and I will be your instructor. In this lesson, we are going to finally close the various activities within RDM. So we're going to look at stage four, the review and close activities, and then we'll conclude this lesson around the release and deployment activities in service operation. All right, one more time with this diagram. Again, you should know it by this point. We're at the final review and close. We've gone through the appropriate planning, the release, build, and test, the deployment, transfer, and retirement, and now we're looking at the review and close. It's very easy to see at this point, again, the interaction between change management, the authorization points, the, and the necessity of change being integrated with release and deployment. There is a document within the uh, exercise guide, a rather robust document that describes all of these activities in great detail. It would be useful to have it available as we go through the information. All right, so we're now ready to formally review and close um, this change, this release. So what is it that we need to consider when we're reviewing a deployment? We're at the stage where the newer change service is operating properly. We've got the high fives. We've done the all night deployments. Everybody is happy. The users are using. The customers are smiling. The service operational folks are uh, able to support this newer change service, quite frankly, we could still be in early life support where we're adding extra information, knowledge, and skills in this early stage of this newer change service. But we need, really need to, to review our actions across all of the activities because it will be input into the change PIR. So let's talk to the stakeholders. Again, the users, the customers, service operation, uh, suppliers, even the folks that were involved in the design and transfer activities. Did they have the appropriate level of input? Did they feel that they were uh, receiving enough information about the activities as they were being carried out? Was anything a surprise to them as they were going forward with this time scale of a project? These are all things that we can get confirmation that our planning was accurate, that our communication was appropriate, or we could be looking at areas that we can improve the next full release. We want to make sure that the quality criteria has been met, and if the quality criteria has not been met, what is it that we need to do? Is this a trigger for changes in our service design? Is this a trigger for, you know, a, an immediate update within the service operation environment? Hopefully, this is, since this is outside the scope of when we would remediate that service, what are we going to do? We should have a policy around that. And again, it would be information that would go back to change evaluation as well as information for the PIR. We need to make sure that all actions are complete. Did we tick off all the boxes in our release plan? Have we done the knowledge transfer? Is that information available? Is training been completed? Has everybody been able to tick the box that they have completed successfully the training requirements and maybe they've been assessed against those new skills that they have needed to learn? And training is not only just for the users of that service, it may be wrapped around the support staff as well. We need to review any open changes that are against that new or change service. Even though it's in the operational stage, there may still be some open changes, items that have not yet been completed. We need to see if we can't tidy up that, uh, that backlog or that list and make sure that we can say fully that we have completed the entire project. We want to review the performance of the various staff. Were we efficient and effective? Did we uh, perform as expected? We certainly would hope that we hadn't created any additional issues during that deployment, making sure that we were able to follow the defined and documented protocols and procedures when we didn't figure out why, and make sure that we change and update them in the future. And then lastly, 
it kind of goes along the line of that no uh, reviewing open changes, make sure that there's no residual issues. It's kind of like tidying up after you've lived in somebody else's house for a while, that you want to leave it in the same condition that you entered into that organization. So kind of like camping in the woods, right? You leave it better in a better condition than when you found it. So make sure that there's no residual issues, um, that, that the newer change service is operating as appropriate, that again, we've tidy up our house. Um, also things to consider is the documentation complete. If there's been any incidents that we've updated those, the known errors, have they transferred over from the development environment? Um, have we had to develop new ones? So have they been included in the known error database? Do we have the trusted workarounds immediately available for that service operations staff? We need to review the overall risks. Have we mitigated as much as we possibly can and the residual risk is it within the organizational risk tolerance? Again, this information is quite vital to the activities of change evaluation. Have we fully removed all redundant assets? And have we checked the uh, handover activities? Are people ready to support on their own? We can remove, gradually remove the technical and support experts from that early life support environment. All of this information then would be transferred as an end of project or end of deployment report throughout the uh, release and deployment ticketing system, through all the various plans, information that would be captured in the SDP, and it would be made available to change management for their review in the PIR, that post-implementation review. We've successfully completed that operational review for whatever time period that we've needed it to be. We're satisfied with the support that we can provide. And now let's review the whole gamut of activities from the requirements gathering, or actually I'm going to say from the idea to all the way to the deployment and successful transition to day-to-day -day operations within the service operation group. So the PIR, it is the responsibility of change management, but they certainly are looking for information from release and deployment. One other area that I would want to uh, encourage people to consider following that release, and especially is the documentation complete. Have we completely updated the CMDB? Now, it could be that the release and deployment team is actually going to be given authority to do the update. Have they passed the information forward so that those CI records for that newer change service are accurate and available for use in impact assessment or an understanding of how that service is being used or deployed? So when we're defining, after we've gone through that uh, review, we want to actually now review and, cl and close that service transition. So we've looked at the deployment, now let's close completely the service transition, which will then, of course, trickle up to close a change. So we want to ensure all transition activities have been completed, that we have uh, the ability to capture accurate metrics around those activities, and those change evaluation reports. We've talked about a couple of different time periods where we're going to be providing interim and then the actual final evaluation report. Again, this all goes to change management, but those change evaluation reports are completed and in the hands of the change manager. Remember that those change evaluation reports are information for that change manager uh, to make the go, no-go decision as we move forward with the change especially that final evaluation report. If the service that's being delivered is not meeting its requirements, though it's operating perfectly fine, but it's not meeting the stated requirements of the customer, the change evaluation report can very well say, hey, we need to back that out. It's not helping the situation. Value has not been achieved. Our recommendation is, it be removed and rethought of in some sort of design. Now, I am being rather doomsday in that statement, but it's as clear as that. If this change that's gone out, hey, it's successful, 
Uh, it's almost like a surgeon saying, hey, I did my job right. The patient was alive when I left him. He died in recovery, not my fault, right? We don't like that kind of passing the buck, but we need to be prepared to ensure that we're delivering the service that's needed and it's within a defined parameter so that we can be ensuring that we're delivering the value that's necessary. So there you have it. There is once more time that we look at those release and deployment activities as they've gone across uh, the various activities of release as well as the authorization points from change management. Finally, what about the activities in service operation? Well, what does the service operation staff do that will support release and deployment? Well, first of all, your release and deployment staff typically will come from those service operational technical functional groups in the first place. So many of those day-to-day -day service operation activities are completed to support release and deployment. It could be the implementation activities, uh, planning for a release, handling the DML, the CIs, so going in and out. So for example, application management, um, the definitive spares within the various technical management groups, and also maybe performing some of those back out activities according to that remediation plan. So there is a very tight crossover between maybe operational staff as well as these transition staff. Remember, when we go into IT, we're typically hired within some technical specialty. We are assigned management roles within the service management realm based on skill sets and needs. We still have our day job, but we still need to incorporate our expertise in the management of these service management processes and activities. Okay, so that ends the discussion around the various activities within release and deployment. We have one more module to go and we'll complete the information around RDM. I look forward to seeing you there.